Hi, my name is Andrew Masters. Welcome to our virtual open house. I've been teaching the social studies here at East Windsor High School for 22 years, and I'm also a graduate of East Windsor High School. Thank you for giving me just a few minutes of your time so that I can introduce you to my courses, how I integrate with my teaching with technology, and how I'll be grading and assessing your students. If your student's taking government economics, it's an introductory course that focuses on the origin designs of government and the responsibilities of each of the branches of government. And it finally focuses on the responsibilities and duties of citizens. Many of the data discussions are driven by current events and as this is an election year, significant time will be allotted to assessing the candidates' positions on a range of issues. If your student's taking economics, this is an introduction to macroeconomics and starts by instilling the understanding that every decision is an economic decision and that all economic decision making involves scarcity. Significant time is given to the factors of production and the power of supply, demand and price on economic decision making. And the final unit is an exploration of the government intervention into the economy. Many daily discussions are also driven by current events and so therefore will be prescient. If you're taking a psychology class, whether it's developmental psychology, behavioral psychology, or AP psychology, your students will learn what makes people tick. The depth and breadth of the class depends on the course selection, but all students will be given multiple opportunities to discuss psychological theories, practices, and phenomenon in a way that will help them to better understand themselves and to better understand those around them. We use Microsoft Teams now exclusively as your student's point of access for work. There your students will find their daily agenda. They'll find their unit work and unit files. It'll be the collaborative classroom in and out of school. So the student teams page looks something like this. These are all my class teams and your student would have one for each class. You can see here that I've posted a daily agenda for September 21st. First, talking about the new constitution and also instructing students to read an article on the life of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Then students will then be submitting a piece of work on the article that they read as a point of discussion. Plus portals is still gonna be used as it always has been, which is a portal for email and messaging to and from families and also for grades. Is just a simple open page from the front page of Plus Portals. Students are graded in the traditional ways, which is points for each assignment completed, including the number of points on a test or in a quiz or projects or essays. However, we make extensive use of school-wide rubrics as a way to give students feedback on their work and also to hopefully show growth over the course of the year. We have rubrics in writing and presenting and reading and problem solving. In the social studies, we primarily use the ones for effective communication and for writing. So those school-wide rubrics go alongside the grade for a particular project. I also grade students on their effective use of class time. Everything that they get to do in class gets points because time is limited and so therefore classwork is very important. But students also have homework or take home assignments, especially as they have two or three days out of school as part of our hybrid school plan. And of course, students get projects, tests, and quizzes. The way that I grade student work is pretty straightforward. You notice that homework and testing quizzes each get 20% of the grade. However, participation in projects and essays make up 60% of the grade. This is because of my firm belief that the amount of time that we have in the classroom together is the most important. And so the largest percentage of the grade weight should be put on those times and those activities that we do together in class when I can provide support for your student and he or she can ask questions as directly as they possibly can. This is working out well for both hybrid and in-person students. Here's a quick look around the classroom from the doorway. From my desk area, looking back towards the doorway, you can see a document camera in the foreground, which is used for daily live streaming. And then from the corner, looking back at my desk area. When students open up Teams, this is what they see. And when they sit down in class, this is what they see. 
please feel free to reach out to me anytime you feel the need to talk to me. Uh, you can email me at amasters at ewct.org. You can also call me anytime at 860-623-3361, extension 7332. And if you have the time, please click on the QR code with your smartphone and complete the social studies point of contact survey. Um, it gives us some valuable, valuable feedback about how well we're doing as teachers and how well we're teaching your students. Thanks very much for spending some time here tonight. I truly appreciate it, and I look forward to meeting you in person in the future.